Madison Stacey Geisler's case, a video gaming club. I assure you it doesn't require a lot of work. And it's a fun way to meet great new people. Let's take a look. Centennial College got Guitar Hero, which is pretty fun for playing against people, except I'm running out of opponents because I keep beating them all. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if Centennial College got even more games? Unfortunately, there isn't a video game budget, but there is a club budget, which is why I'm setting out to create Centennial College's very first video game club. Right after this song. Hi, I would like to start a club at my campus. That's it? When you want to put together a club, you are given a club package, which seems like a lot of paperwork. And it is, but it's all stuff you should be thinking about. So if you cannot fill out this package, most likely your club wouldn't have succeeded anyways. One of the most important aspects of a club is members, so let's go find us some. Hi, uh, I'm starting a video game club here at Centennial College with the UTV. Oh, sorry, sorry. I um, think I'll be interested. Okay. here at Centennial College, would either of you two be interested in joining? Hey guys, I'm trying to start a video game club here at Centennial College, would any of you guys be interested? Villains exit stage left. It's probably a good idea to do this with a friend or other club member because it tends to get a little annoying and repetitive. That being said, let's meet the crew. My responsibilities for the club is to keep a list, an active list of all the members, to assist the president of the club in any way they need, and if the president cannot do his roles, then I take over for him. I also have to attend all meetings and sign on any forms we have. I'm the club liaison for the CCSEI, which is, it's good because I already go to the meetings. So basically what the liaison is supposed to do is go to the meetings and, you know, hear what's going on in CCSEI and see how they can work with CCSEI to make the club better. Basically, I just take your guys' suggestions, you know, what kind of games we should play, like for the Wii, Xbox 360, because there's so many good games for many different systems, so we would like to get your input on it. And basically, I like this club. I think a lot of people should know more about the video game industry, and for this club at least, we're just trying to express how great this industry is. <laughs> November 4th was Centennial College's Madden and Call of Duty tournament, and we had a really great turnout. We had lots of people showing up. We had people saying they enjoyed it. There were prizes. There was mingling. There was pizza. This is really great for the video gaming club because this is what we're going to be doing from now on. Once a month, we're going to be holding these tournaments, and people loved it. They enjoyed it. They randomly gamed around even after it was over, and they can't wait for the next one. Well, the club's up and running now. We have a tournament scheduled for December the 6th, Tuesday. It's going to be Super Smash Bros. Brawl and, by popular demand, Halo 3. So come on down. We're going to have four TVs going. There's going to be pizza. There's going to be plenty of gaming, and there's going to be prizes. In the meantime, this is Matt signing off for the journal and hoping everything continues to go well. This video gaming club is an awesome idea. I mean, where else can I bring out my inner geek? Before the clip, we experienced Crump dancing with the Sega clan. How did you guys come together? Basically, we came together just from crumping in the same area, running into dancers, practice, 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 and just eventually just become friends, you know? Yeah, yeah we'll start off with like just a dance. Like we met through dancing, but now it's just more than that. It's like, you know, it's family. We crump, you know, meet up at his house all the time every week and pretty much just from crumping and dancing with each other, yeah. So you guys 
would say that you guys get along fairly well. Yeah, we get along pretty well. It's because people have to understand crump is a lifestyle. It's not just a dance. Like, when I'm at the bus stop, I'm crumping. When I'm talking on the phone with my mom, I'm thinking about crump. Like, it doesn't matter what we're doing. Crump is always there. Yeah. And what exactly, like, got you guys into crumping? I mean, was it something that you guys have been doing for a long time, or...? Basically, crump is a way of outletting stress. Like, a lot of kids you find nowadays crumping are troubled youth. And crump is an expressive dance. So, like, the moves you see us doing, it's not just moves and tricks. We're expressing emotion through art of dance. So yeah. It's like an internal it expression. A lot of people think it's, it's more than just a dance. Yeah. It's a dance, but as well as, like, you can do anything you want. There's no limit to it. Like, you can see us, you know, throwing our arms out and doing anything we want. We can play with our hats, our shirts. It's just, like, an internal expression, you know? So when you guys are crumping, you're actually, like, putting forth a lot of emotion and thinking of, like, experiences that you might have... Yeah, like, through. like the other day I, I was at my house, got my hydro bill, looked at my hydro bill, oh my lord, didn't know what to do, so I crumped. <laughs> no more hydro bill, gone. Well, it's definitely <laughs> a really good way to take away the stress and anger. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So does, good exercise, too. Does it, so it, like, puts you in, like, a better mood, right? Yes, 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 it does. Because it's, it's literally an outlet of all your stress, your pains, your heartaches, your loves, your passions. Everything you have just comes out through the moves that you're doing. And while you're doing it, it just so happened to look like a dance. So it's sick. So it's sick, yeah. <laughs> it's buck. It's buck. It's buck. So have you guys um, entered any comp competitions or anything? Well, you know, we entered a couple. There's, there's been two in Toronto, one in Montreal. Um, the first one here was a crumb tournament for the crumb king of Toronto. Some guy won it, some guy by the name of Primal. No, it was not him. Yeah, I won that tournament. And then the second one, his big homie won the second one. And yeah, that's so far, that's all we've had here in Toronto for crumb tournaments. Yeah. It's not like any other form of dance. It's such a small community. It's so hard to put together big events like that, you know? So, but have you guys uh, crumped with any other crumbers? Yes, the, there's a lot of us. There's like... I wouldn't say a lot. There's like what, 30, 30 of us in uh, Canada. Well, there's, there's in Canada, more. like this is not just the whole crumb scene right here. No, these are just <laughs> two of us. There's a lot of us, and basically, no one really knows that much about crumping. We just it's like very underground, and like it's very, yeah. You know, we just do it like in this house at nighttime, it's in my backyard, any anywhere. We do it anywhere we anywhere we feel like. It's just there's a lot more of us though. I I actually agree that it's not very well known. I didn't know about it until I saw it bring it on. So <laughs> You've got to rent a movie called Rise. R I Z E Rise. Sickest movie about Crump, the first Crump documentary Rise. ever made. I mean, people aren't still dancing like how they were in that video cuz the dance changes week to week to week. The style keeps changing. But when you, when you want to know about Crump, watch Rise. That's been going for 8 years. 8 years. 8, eight years. years. Starting in LA. So that's what got you guys into crumping after you guys saw that? Definitely. Mm -hmm. And have you guys, um, are you guys planning on doing any other forms of dance or anything? No. No. <laughs> no. Not me. No, no. Crump is just, crump, to me, crump isn't a dance. It's just, it's just a way that we, you know, it's a way that we, we express ourselves. That's all it is. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Before we see the Sega Clan Crump again, we've got one more clip to show you. Our very own Pat Peron took the streets to find out how strongly Tor Torontonians feel about the TTC becoming an essential service. Let's take a look at what he found out. The Toronto Transit Commission. Millions of people take it to get across the city of Toronto every day. And yet one weekend in April, it all just stopped. The TTC went on strike and stranded Torontonians across the city. A small group of people are fighting to stop those strikes from happening. We spoke to City Councilor Cliff Jenkins about the prospect. My colleague uh, Cesar Palacio and I brought forward a motion to City Council. What we're trying to accomplish is make the TTC an essential service which would mean that in the event of a, a, a non-negotiated settlement, the, the two parties couldn't come to an agreement on a settlement, uh, that the, we would have mandatory arbitration to settle the remaining items. And so that there wouldn't have to be a strike, that we, the people of Toronto could be guaranteed a continuous service of the TTC. To do that, we really needed to gain, uh, demonstrate public support for it. 
So in, in the course of demonstrating public support over the summertime, uh, we went to visit uh, TTC stations, we talked to TTC riders, and 